G'day and welcome back to Buildsum. And as a little bit of a change, I'm going to start a series of videos covering the Australian Standard 1684, the Timber Framing Code, and in particular concentrating on 1684.2, which is for non cyclonic areas, which is applicable for where I live. So basically, the Timber Framing Code is a standard which is um, there to provide our building industry with procedures that can be used to determine building practice and to design or check construction details and to determine member sizes and bracing and fixing requirements for timber framed construction in non-cyclonic areas. So in this day and age it's not very common practice for a builder to design every element of the frame but if you ever had to put a beam in for a renovation or you just weren't sure about something you could use the timber framing code uh, to work it out. There are a few companion documents for the Timber Framing Code. As I said, we're going to concentrate on Part 2. But there is also Part 1, which is Design Criteria. Part 3, which is for cyclonic areas. And Part 4, which is simplified non-cyclonic areas. It's just not as specific as what Part 2 is. Along with the actual code itself, there are a lot of supplements and these are the actual tables that have all the spans that the different timbers can uh, can achieve. So you'll notice they're broken up into wind speeds, so N1 and N2 wind speeds. There are 15 supplements covering F5 through to F27 seasoned and unseasoned timber and it also includes the MGP 10, 12 and 15 grading as well. And we have the same for N3 wind speeds, so another 15. Again, all the F8 stress grades and the MGP stress grades. And we also have the same for N4. So there's quite a few supplements that go along with the actual um, act itself. The act is broken up into a few different sections, the first one being scope and general. So it f covers, you know, it looks at what the actual act covers. It looks at any companion documents and anything that was referenced uh, to get the information for this uh, for this document. It looks at the limitations, what it, you know, what it doesn't cover and how far it does cover. And I'll look at that in a separate uh, presentation. It looks at the design criteria, the forces on the building that are taken into consideration. It talks about load paths, offsets and cantilevers. It looks at the durability of the timber. It talks about how the act measures dimensions. Uh, it talks about bearing of timbers and again the stress grades. It also looks at uh, engineered timber products and engineered wood products. It talks about tolerances, so how uh, far above or below a, a, a given uh, dimension can you be, alternative dimensions and steel grade and cor corrosion protection. It also looks at considerations for design under the standard and interpolation. So that's the first section. The second section uh, looks at uh, has a general section, looks at terminology of the framing members, so it actually shows you what members, what they call each member. So you get uh, the correct terminology when you read the code. Looks at um, vertical lamination and stud lamination. Also looks at horizontal lamination for wall plates only. Looks at uh, load width and the area supported. And again, we'll do I'll do um, separate demonstrations or videos on those. And it also has some definitions in general. So that gives you the uh, bit of an idea of what's what they're saying in, in the uh, in the document. Again, section three looks at the substructure of the building, so site preparation and drainage, ground clearance, subfloor ventilation, durability, substructure bracing, subfloor supports, footings and supports for wind classifications N1 and N2. It's all covered in section three. Section four, we start getting into our framing, so it looks at floor framing. Most of the framing areas are broken up into these three areas, so you have just general information. You have the the point two, in this case 4.2, so 
section which is about how you use or how the members are used and then 4.3 covers and directs you to the table, the correct table to get the member size. Okay, so that's for floor framing, section 4. Section 5 looks at flooring and decking. So it looks at platform floors, fitted floors, expansion joints, laying and fixing, wet area floors, joist spacing in the flooring, and it also looks at decking. Section 6 again looks at uh, wall framing, but it's just split up to general, building practice, so you know, how the members are used, and then member sizes, you know, what size they actually need to be, and where to find it. Roofing similar in section 7, general building practice and member sizes. And then we get into our racking and shear forces, so looking at the bracing. So again, a general section, then it looks at temporary bracing, how much you need. And then it looks at wall and subfloor bracing, how to work that out, how much bracing you need in your building. And then section 9, it looks at the fixings and tie down requirements. So again, general connect, then general connection requirements, procedure flowchart, uh, 9.4 novel and specific fixing requirements. Okay, then we look at 9.5 nominal fixings or minimum fixings, and then specific tie down fixings, and then we look at shear forces in section nine. And then we have all the appendices. So there's quite a few. A being typical construction mass, B looking at durability, C looking at inter interpolation, D looking at examples of a foundation bearing area and even distrib distribution of bracing, E looking at moisture content and shrinkage, F looks at racking forces and alternative procedures, G looks at timber species and properties, H looks at storage and handling of materials, I looks at collar ties uh, with multiple rows of purlins and J looks at building practices for engineered wood products. And the bibliographies at the end. So there you go, that is a quick overview of the Australian Standard 1684.2. Uh, in subsequent videos I will drill down uh, deeper into what we've just looked at and eventually I'll show you how to work out you know, how to work out the size of the members that you need.